Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Woo-hoo! If you ever wanted more time in your life, then do we have the Morning Miracle Power show for you. Today, we'll talk about the power of the mornings, how to harness it, tap into it, and how to ride it for all it's worth, and why in the world it can be so helpful for your life. That plus we'll talk about Viktor Frankl, the worst Tuesday ever, Uh oh, what to do when <laughs> everything falls apart, getting back to the gym, out to nature, one more weekend left, making music madness, store, store, what's in a store, and what anything but that has to do with anything. So welcome <laughs> back to the show, CJ. <laughs> Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. Woo! <laughs> so I like starting things on a positive note. So I'm, <laughs> I'm almost afraid to ask, what's the worst Tuesday ever? All right. So I just moved over from, um, I've just moved over from T-Mobile to AT&T because first of all, I, I can't stand T-Mobile. And secondly, because the service um, is much better in Durham, North Carolina, where my son is now in college. Actually and gradually moving your way there without realizing Exactly. It. I know. You think I'm going to be moving to North Carolina. Maybe I will, but we just bought a care. We just made a carriage house in the back of our house. I don't think so. But anyways, um, um, I switched over phones and I'm not sure what happened during that switch over, but my calendar, which I use Google calendars and in Google calendars, you can specify like CJ's personal calendar, CJ's family calendar, CJ's school calendar. You can have it all, um, integrate together. And for whatever reason, during the switch, my main calendar got switched off. I'm not sure what happened, or maybe I, cl- I don't know what happened. So on Tuesday, I was going to get together. Um, a friend's like, hey, do you want to go for um, a walk on Tuesday? I'm like, absolutely. So I put it in the calendar. And then um, on Tuesday morning, um, I get a message saying, uh, I'm here at Starbucks at 7 in the morning. Um, were we going to meet? And I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Somehow, the appointment that I had made before missed it is not no longer on my phone calendar. Uh, it's not anywhere to be seen when I click on calendar or my, or my whole life on the calendar. So I said, oh, oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, when can, and he's like, don't worry, I'm going to be hanging out here the whole time till 10. So then I went over for my walk with a dear friend and I had to cut that walk short so that I could go and coach this person. So I rushed back, went to coach him. And then um, as I'm sitting down for um, our coaching session, I see another text going, hey, um, I was here at nine, but I didn't see you. So oh, I'm hoping no. that you're okay. Because I never, like, this is like once in seven years that I, I have this massive of uh, like totally forget something, you know. And then I write here, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm going to meet her today at one as a way to kind of like make it up. I don't know. But it was just like one after another. And um, in um, our back cottage, we are having, um, we were going to have Nataji Swami Kichanarta come, Kichartanata come to do a presentation. And then he had to cancel out last minute for a lot of good reasons, but he had to cancel out. And then I was working with East West Bookstore, who where he was uh, sponsoring an event and work through that. And so that whole thing was like, coming to not coming together coming together and meanwhile there are a whole bunch of different things spiraling around friday which was today which i said i think i have to pick up swami um key church at the airport so i may not be able to make it and then i had this book club that all the way all, the only way that all these seven women who are possibly hard to get together could meet would be at this book club and they chose my book victor frankel as the book so i thought well i i told them i couldn't really make this date but they chose my book. So I thought, well, I'll go for an hour and, you know, see what I can do. So I thought I'll go for an hour and 15. And I said, well, I got to go guys. And they were like, yeah, but we haven't even talked about your book. You're the one who chose the book. Victor Frankel, tell us what you think. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then it's, so it's just been this constant, like, I don't know what the universe is telling me, but it Tuesday was the worst day ever. Cause everything that I planned fell apart it all came together in a beautiful way um, because it so happens when I found out that he was not going to be able to make it, 
another person who studied under Rudanandra, which is the same lineage, is coming, happens to be in Seattle here on the same weekend. I love that. Happens to be around here to do, and he is going to stay in our place instead of um, Nataji and do the same body of work, different person, same body of work. It all came together. <laughs> So, so I, I like the lesson, the lesson that, that we wrap up this whole thing. Yeah, what is the is lesson? When, <laughs> well, when our calendars blow up, when these things seemingly happen that seem awful on the surface, um, and I'm guessing with your coaching clients and with your meetings as well, it, if you don't go into the panic mode about it, it all seems to sort itself out sooner or later. Yes, what, what I didn't do, what I would have done in the past was like guilt and shame myself to the point of being inoperable during the coaching session. But now I'm like, I know what happened. I honestly don't know what happened. Let's coach, you know, and then it's, yeah. and, and so all my energy is directed to that person at the task at hand, whatever that task at hand is, like reorganizing the event, meeting with the person and going like, oh, wow, I just found out five minutes before this thing that I that I messed up once again <laughs> this morning. <laughs> I, I, I don't usually bring up anything political, but I think back to, to Clinton and when he's being impeached. And, mm -hmm. and I think I was a, a teen at that point. And um, uh, when, when Clinton was being, was being impeached? Or yeah, I guess it. You mean yeah. when he was being confronted with the Mala Nicole Lewinsky stuff? Well, that whole situation, there was a word that, that was PC at the time, which was to compartmentalize. Oh, right. And, and that stuck in my head because here's a guy, you know, that's got a lynch mob after him. Right. And he still has to try to run the country. Right. And, and I have, when, when stuff is happening like that, I don't think of him specifically, but I do think of you've got to be with the task at hand, period. Whatever other fires and flames are going on, you will get to deal with that in its time. Right. But right now, this is it. Focus on the moment. Focus on the present. I just saw a client this morning, a different client at seven this morning, and uh, he um, and he had a really rough childhood where he had a father that was very um, abusive and volatile. But as a result, to 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 live in that scenario, he had to actually be someone who would take information in really quickly and be able to adapt very quickly and to whatever awful thing happen, he would just focus on moving the next step forward. Like, okay, I know that, you know, you know, the car just crashed and so-and-so has a sore throat and, you know, mom, but like, let's move forward. Like he has that kind of mentality and it's because he was raised in a situation like that. And I said, well, I guess, yeah, so these are all the wonderful traits and attributes that he brings with him on his job. He is just like the world can be falling apart. He's like, people say to me, um, you know, John, the world is falling apart, but yet you, his name is not John. That's not gonna, what's the name I'm going to make up? John, the world is falling apart. And I always know that I can count on you to be calm and like have your act together and move us on, move us on target. How can you do it? And, um, you know, he doesn't say this to other people. It's like, it's because I had an abusive dad that I like, I learned these skills and, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not that an abusive dad can be a gift, but like he learned those skills as a, as a, as a part of having an abusive dad. And I thought that's so interesting, you know, keeping on focus, sticking to the task, even when the world feels like it's falling apart. But the, I have that too. I don't know where I got it from, but I have that too. So let's, let's segue from there. And I, I want to talk morning about morning miracle. Today, yes. but, but first let's segue. Cause when you talk about the world falling apart, Victor Frankl is one of the most important authors of the last century for man's search for meaning. What can you tell us or what, what is really sticking with you about him in this book right now? Okay, two things are sticking with me. One is, um, it's, uh, it's they talk about it a lot in spiritual books, but it's not necessarily um, when when we hit really hard times in our life when we are suffering. Whether it's like my son is leaving for college, I don't really know who I am anymore. Um, uh, I, uh, I lost my job. Someone died. I mean, when we, when we hit those hard points, um, which Nataji talks as contractions, tensions, suffering, um, it's how we suffer and do we, how do we make meaning out of the suffering? Mm -hmm. 
do we just, you know, do we just, just, oh, I'm in pain and complain or do we go, okay, there are some, some karmic reason that this is happening. Um, I, and, and, and knowing on the other side that the meaning is there, like, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I know Mm -hmm. at the very end that, um, there's something meaningful that's happening. I'm going to grow. I'm going to be a better person. Um, I think that that's, uh, that's actually one of the things that I picked up from it, which is, we talk about that a lot in the spiritual stuff, but it was just a reminder of that. And, uh, the other was he, he talks about, um, uh, do you know when you have a fear of something happening? And so you think about the fear of that happening and you can't stop thinking about the fear of the happening. In fact, of the fear of the fear of that thing happening ends up being worse than the actual thing happening. So he, he talks about someone who um, is a gentleman who sweats a lot and he um, and there's certain people that trigger him off to sweat even more than he would normally. And so um, he said, we'll confront it, meet that person and say, you know, when I see you, I sweat a ton and just bring it up like the worst thing, because you don't want that person to see that you're sweating. Right. But if you say to the person when I like for whatever reason, I sweat a lot. And I want to show you, like, I'm sweating a lot. <laughs> so you, like, bring it up front and you you feel the feeling, experience the worst possible thing that you're fearing, and you, and you bring it up front. And then the next time you see him, you think, I'm going to see this person, and instead of sweating a quarter of quarter gallon, <laughs> I'm going to sweat a gallon of sweat. I'm going to show it to this person. Like, that's how, like, I'm going to, I'm going to overcome this fear. By leaning into it, feeling, going into it. And then what happens, and I've done this kind of work with my clients and myself, is that when you, instead of run away from the feeling, this is the modern day version, instead of running away from the feeling, you feel it intensely. Oh my gosh, you know, um, uh, I'm trying to figure out, oh, how am I going to, how am I going to make it up to this woman? I feel so bad that I didn't do this, but let's say I'm going, oh no, I feel so guilty. I feel so guilty. She's going to think I'm the worst person on earth. I am the worst person on earth. I am going to like, just put myself in like, you know, big scarlet A, put myself in that place and just like dwell in that place of guilt and shame and then make myself feel even more guilty and shameful than that moment. And then there's a point in which you hit the maximum amount of that emotion that is run amok. And mm-hmm. what happens is it, 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 the toxicity, the ridiculousness of it all comes to front, comes to in the forefront, and you can just let it all go. Somehow maximizing the worst possible case and confronting it, uh, makes the whole thing diminish. And I've experienced that myself, but for him to write about this many, many moons ago, I thought, wow, that's so interesting. But I, I like that he wrote about it and that this idea that th- is now in so many different techniques, is, I, I think it comes from load to therapy, which is the, ther- the kind of therapy, logotherapy, yeah. logotherapy, which is the one that he created. And then the quest for meaning and how important that is and how it's important for us to create goals. And what's hard is what I would say from running the spiritual path is when you're on a spiritual path, you have, you're trying to let go of all those worldly goals. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to be other people measure me and say whether I'm good or not. So like I've been trying to let go of like measuring how good I am and what value I have based on the traffic and numbers and subscribers, which was used to make me crazy. Like I'd be obsessed about it, looking at it every day, every moment, five or six times a day. I literally got to the point where I just let go of all of that. So when you start get letting go of all those kind of goals, what happens is that or like trying to measure myself and my value based on how good of a mother I am, whether my kid gets into a good call, like those kind of things. And when you start letting go of all of those, um, you don't, it's kind of void of a certain type of purpose. And so what I've started to do is I take my goals, which is about having more freedom, fun, and meaning. Yeah. And then, and um, actually my most recent one that I do in morning is to think about, um, am I present? Um, am I o- approaching things with a loving heart? And am I surrendering? And if I'm, and I literally now have a metric of one to 10 that I measure myself on those three things every single day when I wake up. So in my morning ritual now, 
I'm mm-hmm. like, where am I? On, I'm going to review the next day and see, was I, did I have an open heart? Did I surrender? Did I, you know, you know, did I do those three things that I said I was going to do? And so I measure myself. So I'm making even the spiritual thing as a goal so that because there's a part of us in logotherapy that is it logotherapy or logotherapy logo logotherapy that wants to have goals because it provides us meaning and everything so that's that's how i've translated all of it and i've totally been blathering on so tell me about your morning (laughs) miracle power what are you doing in the morning now well it's taken a while this fall to get with a move and everything to get back into a rhythm In, in fact since we've moved to emerald isle i have found it surprisingly difficult to get into my I get into a morning routine but the morning routine has been later mm. than I'd like it not first and, thing in the morning where it used to be like wake up in the morning and do well it would be first thing in the morning but first thing in the morning would be in the the five somethings or six somethings hours rather than in the four something hours mm. and now I'm back for myself to naturally getting up I don't set an alarm somewhere between four and say 444 or so in the morning um, Yes, is when I'm getting up. And that shift has taken a real deliberate um, practice in the evenings to get myself up in the morning. So before I'm doing my evening coaching, and I typically coach from uh, five to eight, then I've got an upload, then I can get to bed. But before I even start my evening coaching, I'm almost in a sense getting ready for bed. I'm, mm. I'm checking, checking things off of my list. What's it going to take? to get to bed early so that the minute I get my upload done, I'm heading to bed Mm. relatively. There may be a few things to put away in the kitchen or whatever, but I'm getting to bed. That allows me, and I found that I stopped my my, uh, eating a late dinner because I'm working late. I stopped doing that and it allows me to sleep earlier. I'm getting into a deeper sleep fast because my body's not trying to digest stuff. And I'm waking up around four o'clock completely refreshed. Wow, that's interesting. So basically, you get a better morning by working on your on your rituals in the evening proceeding. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have to, if my morning is going to be a good morning, it, it's dependent on the night before. So I have my nighttime rituals. Mm. And I've even had to reframe in my head because I'm going to bed now around nine or a little bit afterwards or is when I'm getting to sleep. But when I was saying I'm going to bed around nine or a little afterwards, that actually meant I was probably not going to get to bed until 9.45 or 10 because I had all these things to get done. Right. Now I'm saying it's the minute you're done and it's much sooner. I'm saying it's 8.15, 8.30. Okay, got it. So you shifted everything back an hour. So that, that shifted hour. Shifted in my mind. By shifting it in my mind, then I'm actually hitting the goal. Okay, before so what the, does it mean shifting it in your mind? So you, you said so it out loud. I was or saying, you... Before I was saying, I'm going to bed around nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. And you would you say, say it out that, loud. Say it out loud, write it, think it, feel it, okay, whatever it was. It. it was just, I'm going to bed around nine o'clock. Then I know I can get up around four. Mm-hmm. Cool. I'd never end up getting to bed around nine o'clock. It would take me longer. When I say I'm getting to bed by 8, 15, 8, 30, then even if I don't hit 8, 30, I'm getting to bed before that nine o'clock. Right. Okay. Got I it. hit that target. It's sort of like not having a snooze along, but but setting the alarm sooner than you need to get up to ensure that you get up on time. Right. I've had to play a little bit of a mind game with myself. I see. To ensure that I get to bed before that that uh, hard stop nine o'clock. <laughs> it's working. I'm waking it's, it's up. It's called in the. the morning. <laughs> It's called the Allison effect in my mind because I had this friend named Allison. And if I'd say, Allison, let's get get together at nine, um, she or if I said, let's get together at nine, I know that she would show up at 10. Like she just has that kind of lifestyle where she sometimes shows up an hour later. So then I would say, let's get together at eight, thinking that she would show up at nine, which was my intended time. And then I had the mistake of telling her that. And then as the Allison effect occurred, then she showed up at 10 again. So then I would show up. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, <laughs> don't ever tell someone. So what was uh, the only point being, like, it's interesting that your mind knows this, but you're sm- and your mind knows it's tricking your mind, but your mind is still okay with it. Well, it's a matter of there are certain things to get done. It's sort of like if you say, I need to be someplace at, uh, I don't know, I need to be somewhere at nine. And and then you think, well, I'll get everything shut down and be out the house by nine. Somewhere in there, you forgot to put in the 
It Slack takes time. time to get to the car. It yes. takes time to actually drive there. And so that happens with your nighttime routine too, is you forget it takes time to get things right. in order typically before you get to sleep. So setting that earlier is allowing me to do that. And then like, I know for instance, we get a better night's rest if the place is cooler. Mm. So making sure you've got your windows open or your AC on or whatever it takes to have the temperature down by the time you're gonna go to sleep. Mm. Looking at these things hours in advance, which sounds a little bit nutty, but the amount mm. of more rest and relaxation, I get a deeper night's sleep, I have nothing hanging over my head. In the morning, I can start, and we can talk about it in a few minutes, a beautiful morning ritual. And then I can even get those extra things done, the projects that I've been wanting to do that I haven't had the quote time, I can do them now because I'm getting up early. It's not that I'm cutting anything out of my life. I'm just being more deliberate about how and when I get to bed. Mm -hmm. That's all it's taking. Nothing else, nothing's been removed from my life. No fun has been stripped away. It's just setting myself up for success in the evenings. You know what this is reminding me of, and I do want to hear your uh, your um, morning ritual, but what this is reminding me of is um, I have a health coach. Um, I'm part of this program. I think I told you about this Monday months ago. I've been on it for about six months, and it's um, it's called Ari Val, and uh, you have a health coach as part of it, and they look at your DNA sequence. They look at your diet. They look at your biomes, and they actually put together a plan, and she's been um, my coach as, every month told me a little bit about DNA sequence, what they found about the genetics, and you know, in each session, we cover like the world because, of course, I'm curious so I asked her like 5,000 questions <laughs> and in the last session she said to me okay now n n enough with your questions was kind of like the, the main thing and she said I'm looking at your numbers and you just need to focus on one thing sleep just do you know you're I'm like I don't understand I'm not losing weight I, I was losing weight all the time and then I wasn't losing weight and I don't know what's happening she's like sleep one thing don't focus on like how much you know don't like just sleep. And, um, and I did focus on sleep for a period of time and, um, just one focus, one singular focus sleep. And I ended up losing the extra five pounds that I felt like I couldn't lose in the last couple, like in, in the last two months, I've lost those five pounds that I was lurking really hard for, um, over the last, yeah. So the last, yeah, I think the last five weeks, I've lost those five pounds and I couldn't lose them before. And I've been working really hard on it for about two months. The downside though, is when I think about focusing on sleep, I, I, I don't sleep as well. You know what I mean? Like I'm more uptight about sleep than yeah. I've well, ever been. I'm not been. focusing on the sleep. Focus on the getting to bed. If I end up going to bed and I don't fall asleep, so be it. And I had that a, a week or two ago where uh, both Jessica and I were up till almost midnight. And I'm like, well, it's just a slumber party. Yeah, you know? so you're just resting. So it's the idea of being in bed and resting. Won't worry about it even mm. in the slightest. If that's how the game's going to play out, I'm totally cool with that. Now, I tend to repeat that's mantras. That's a good attitude. If, if I'm not falling asleep, I tend to repeat a mantra. I wake up uh, alive and refreshed or awake and refreshed. Yeah, regardless of whether I sleep at 12 or 9 or whatever. Doesn't matter. Hey, if universe wants to keep me up, I'm just going to be here now, but I know I'm going to wake up super refreshed and ready to go. Now, I may wake up a little bit tired, but if I got that mantra going, chances are I'm pretty good off. If I stressed out about not sleeping, I got two challenges going on. First off, I'm going to wake up once I do finally fall asleep, which is going to be later. I'm going to wake up exhausted with like a hangover. The second challenge is some tripwire mechanism, and I'd have to take some time to really think about engineer how it all works. By being afraid of falling asleep and then not falling asleep for quite a while, because I was afraid, I actually hardwire in some sort of fear loop with sleep that's going to make it even harder to fall asleep the next night. Because I'm going to be so worried the next night, I didn't fall asleep last night and I was all worried about it. It still didn't work out. So now I'm going to be even more worried about it and it's going to be even harder to fall asleep. And so I'm going to wind myself up and have a real sleep condition after just a few days by being afraid of going. That's, uh, uh, that's exactly what's happening to me. And I just realized that <laughs> I'm going to try the Viktor Frankl thing to say like, I'm not going to fall asleep the whole night, maybe, possibly. Yeah, it's all and I'm good. just going to hang out. It's all good. 
I'm going to be restful even still. Even still, I'm going to be restful so that you like, like you get the worst case possible. I may not sleep at all tonight. And that's okay because I'm going to feel refreshed. Don't know how. I'm still going to feel refreshed. And Okay, I'm going to try that because I think the thing that you're talking about in the second part is happening to me because more now the fear of the fear of the fear of not falling asleep has got me. And I didn't even until this moment think about the Viktor Frankl and like, okay, I'm just going to lean into it and say, okay, I'm not going to go to sleep. If you don't fall asleep, you spend some good quality time with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd you lose? <laughs> That's a great way of thinking about it. Okay, so now you wake up at four in the morning, and what's what's your morning routine? So my morning routine is first um, make a sprint for the computer to write down my latest dream, whatever that is. I always want to get my dreams down on paper. Um, I woke up this morning and Jessica was like, "Please, beats or meowsers," and I'm like, but "Dream, gotta remember dream." <laughs> That's the hardest thing because you're like, dream, 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 mouser. Oh, oh, I lost the dream. <laughs> yeah. I did get the dream down. I have to okay. go go and figure out how to interpret it. Something about frozen snakes in a sandwich. Well, figure it all out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, interesting dream. But you so you the, write you your get, dreams in a journal, a dream journal? Uh, on, on, on the computer, but okay. at the start... And the start of, I have like a daily journal. So, mm. um, so I write dream, I write the dream down and then we've been making, uh, making, experimenting just some beautiful binaural beat music. And mm. so I put on some binaural beat music oh, that's um, nice. to help me get into a theta state. And so I'm listening to this beep, 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 as this beautiful music is playing and then half an hour to an hour, I go into my automatic writing. And I just write, 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 let everything come out, do my visualization work mm. for the day, for the years ahead. Um, there's always some time in there, probably through automatic writing, that I'm really wanting to crank up the love and care for Jessica each day. Each day, can I do a little better? Can I do a little better? Can I do a little better? And, and so I'm challenged and I write that down, always asking, what's my SMP? What's my single-minded purpose for the day? I know I'll get the show done. I know I'll read the book. Um, I know we'll do the uploads. But what else is important to get done today? Mm. And and then I go from there. And then I crawl down out of my chair. And, and when I write in my chair in my automatic writing, I'm uh, hopefully in a half present, melted into the chair, half asleep state. Just get it all down. Then I slink off of the chair onto the floor. And I go into my, my lotus or half lotus, whatever you call it, position you know, legs crossed there. And for the next half hour, hour, I go into a meditation. Oh, and that's beautiful. I so it's like an hour. It. it sounds like an hour and a half. This Somewhere whole in there. Yeah. I Let love it flow. It. There's no attachment to the exact time that it has to take place. I finish that, you know, it's, it's shave, it's get it's breakfast, it's work on, um, work on the music, work on some of the binaural beat music. And then the sun is coming up mm. and um, this is this is the first home that we've been in since Maui that at least this time of year, you can see the sun come up from from uh, the upper level of the house. And, and I'm kind of like in a in, a, in the top of a castle. The ivory tower at the top is where the studio is and my office is. And so I can sit and look out the sliding glass doors with a little what do you mm. call it, landing or deck. And watch the sun come up. And so I'll gaze with the sun, go to silence, gaze with the sun for five or 10 minutes, and then go about the day. Now, we're, and, and that typically means reading a book or being active. I like to get out early in the morning. Just today, Jessica and I got back to the gym for the first time really since late spring. Mm. We'll incorporate that. I don't know what it'll look like yet, but I know it's for good for both of our health for the winter. Mm -hmm. But there's time for that. This routine isn't a routine of hustle up and get things done. It's a routine of relax into the day. Mm. And so the stress hormone levels are down. I've got working on the music, a big project. In the future, it will be working on my books, a big project. All of this gets done. And then it's time to go about the day. I've already gotten, I've taken care of my self-care, my future thinking, planning, visioning, what's the most important thing for the day, something health-related, 
I'm feeling on fire. And then I get to start the day. Right. And it's like, instead of being in a complete overall <laughs> cortisol stimulus, let's go. Like I had a scheduling thing this morning where it came up that um, a, a coaching session had been moved without being, being, being notified of it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm in the middle of, of prep for an interview and I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. But because <laughs> I had that foundation in the morning, right. I went, all right, we can do this. Let's try to make sure this doesn't happen again. But okay, I've got the foundation for the day. Okay, here's what I'm I got. When you, so you had the so you get your self care and you relax yeah. into today, and you start off the morning with some introspection time, which is your channeling. Then you actually do a meditation so that you actually have some time on the floor. Then you come up with your single minded focus, and then you also do manifestation. Not necessarily in that order, but that's kind of your your morning package. Is that right? That's Did I miss the morning anything? Package before we get probably some movement in right. there. And and then the special project. So okay, so you do your, gets your rolling, music is in there too. Absolutely, I love it because what I because I've been I, it's funny because it's merging a bunch of different things. I have a friend who is a, a, a she's a writer at the New York Times and a writer period. And I said, how do you? I really want to write, but I don't find time to write. And she's like, you got to do it first thing in the morning because right. that's and it's so I think it's the whole idea of taking care of business first and like self-care doing things that you care about you want to do which is working out your manifestation your meditation your personal you know stuff and your extra like all those kinds of things it's like when you get that done you're like done I'm done for the day He's great. yeah in terms of like whatever happens after this juncture is just like bonus points beyond, you know, what I can imagine. So I like that idea of, I'm, cause I, cause I, cause I, I also had the same kind of thing because I was traveling a lot and this happens, right? Life happens. You move, you travel, you, and you, you get off cycle and it's just, okay, I'm off cycle. And it's so tempting to go, oh, I'm off cycle. I'm, screw it. I'm done. Like, I don't know why I even tried this. No, you got to go back and say, I'm off cycle. And what I thought was interesting is you went back and you said, okay, what is the one thing that I need to do? And you're like, I need to get to sleep earlier. But So I'm going to trick my mind into doing this 8 a.m. thing, you know, 8 p.m. I'm time to go to bed versus 9 p.m. And that one thing solved this whole thing. And for, for me, for me, I was like, I'm so off kilter. My meditations were like, okay, breathe in, breathe. What is that? Okay, I have to do that. You know, <laughs> I was like, no, no, go back, breathe. Okay, breathe in, second. Like, wait, what is that? Wait, what? You know, and it, they were the worst meditations on bar none. They were the worst meditations. And uh, I thought, okay, I need to get back to my morning routine. So it's funny that we arrived at the same place. Yeah. You arrived at it by figuring out your evening routine. But it's getting all the stuff that you need in the morning. And, and I think what I'm going to do to amend mind is I'm going to add a manifestation piece and add a writing piece in it. I think that that would help a great deal. And, and then also so that everything is done. Because I'm almost like I never find time to write. Well, if it's important, then I work out in the morning. Why? Because it's important. So I get it done every morning. Yeah, front load it. So I like that. I'm going to try that. And I think the other thing just for what I, what you're doing is you're waking up at four in the morning. See, I usually wake up at seven. So by the time I wake up at seven, it's you know, like nine o'clock and I'm going to right around seven 30, I start getting interrupted, you know, so-and-so mm -hmm. has this, I'm getting a call. So if you wake up at four, <laughs> you have like three hours <laughs> before chaos ensues, right? Well, there are two key components with that. First off, do not check email. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to check the email. I don't, you know, I, I talk about not having the smartphone, so I can't go for my phone. Right. I could get on the computer because I'm listening to the music, so I could do that, but I'm not going to check. Yeah, I that would be my first thing. I don't want anybody else's day to become mine because what's on email are energetic gifts. Right. <laughs> and they're <laughs> rarely the gifts you want to open because you're going to take ownership. <laughs> Right. So it's like this. Nope, I'm not opening email. The only thing I'm going to do is write, mm -hmm. play music and maybe create music. That's it. And so you have to make a pact with yourself, which I think is important. But yeah, it's just I'm one thing to change, you know, to start. That's the hard thing when you fall off the wagon is to start.
all over again. Chip away at it 15 minute blocks. That's how I tend to do it. So you go from 7.30 to 7.15 to 7 to 6.45. So it's kind, gentle. No need to put yourself in jet lag. Now, I'm known for doing things black and white, but not for the sleep. I like to be really kind and gentle. There's one more piece to this component, which is the energy or being in sync with the planet. Mm -hmm. and, and that's no small thing. When you get up at 7, sun is coming up soon. Mm -hmm. What happens when the sun comes up? The animals come up. The birds come to life. Everybody is commuting. And so even when you try to go still, if the whole world, the rest of the world is rushing to get to work and rushing to get to you Starbucks. You feel the energy. Good luck getting still. It's really hard time to write. If instead you're up when the world is silent. Yeah, way easier. That's a really good point. If, especially if you're sensitive to energy, which both of us are. That's a really good observation. Your writing will be better, will be deeper. If you journal, if you do automatic writing, you're more plugged in and connected. And you're a lot more, your, your meditations obviously will go much better. But it, it's sort of like a, a, a slow motion toaster oven Earl, or, or toaster. Early in the morning, you can get into your deepest place, your most profound place. The, your visioning is most profound. Anything you're thinking is, is more profound. As the sun starts to gradually come up, it doesn't have to have crested the horizon yet, your thoughts go from more inward to outward. So that's why I don't think first off in the day, what do I need to do today? Leave that for later because that will naturally, and that's what was happening with you in your meditation, percolate as it gets close to sunrise. So your deepest time is the darkest, the twilight hours. As that sun starts to come up, you're a little bit more here, you're a little bit more here, and then it's full on for the day. Now you can go about checking your email. Now you can figure out exactly what to do. You're in sync with the natural cycle. You don't even have to worry about it. Yeah, you know, um, Lama Surya Das had written a book a couple years back, and it was talking about being very careful and in congruence with the cycles of, of, of the day and the night. And three and four o'clock is the time where monks get up and do the meditation, probably for exactly that same reason. From a scientific angle, I had done a, a workshop with um, Joe um, Dispenza. Dispenza. And he was saying that three and four in the morning is also when your pineal gland is actually at its ripest. So it's at three or four o'clock in the morning that, um, in fact, when you take a meditation class of his, he'll wait, he'll have you come to do meditation at three or four in the morning um, for, for one of the last days of this advanced meditation, precisely because your brain is just like, it's, it's there working with you. You're um, biorhythms are naturally attuned. So if you want to lean into the cycle, not only avoid the chaos that starts at seven when everyone wakes up and the energy is ramping up, but to also lean into when you, your third eye, your insight, your own personal wisdom is at its highest, it's at that three, three or four o'clock in the morning. I don't know if I can do three, but I think I I could try four. I'm, I'm really curious to see what it would look like if I start waking up at four. It sounds kind of glorious in a lot of ways i'll call it delicious it's really cool now i've done three o'clock and and we did that with one of our earlier books that we wrote and that was hard um yeah, and it, and it kind hard. of messed with things for a long time a long term and you'd just be exhausted by the end of the day for me and I, you know i i clearly i'm not a monk a monk may be able to generate <laughs> that energy right. that i can't but um but going for, and then my automatic writing, that's, that's a theta meditative state. Yeah. So I'm writing in this half awake state and you're right. It's just a blissful experience at that point. And it's funny because the last couple of nights, do you know what time I've been waking up? 4.30. Every, I'm like, why am I waking up four? Exactly. Why am I waking up at 4.30? Seriously? And I'm like mad and irritated. And I stay up till 5.30 trying to go back to sleep. And I'm like, I'm still sick. All this kind of stuff. But next time I'd be like, 4.30. Guess the universe is on my side. And start typing and everything. I have a new, I Michael, you've helped me tremendously. I have a new thing to try out. I'm going to try it. So we'll talk, we'll have Woo. to talk about it next week. Woo! <laughs> kind, gentle, easy, good. But if you wake up at 4.30, remember that the brain sleeps in REM cycles. So there's no point in going to back to bed for 30 or 45 minutes. You're just going to wake up in the middle of a REM cycle if you get to sleep and slay yourself. Because if you wake up in the middle of the REM cycle, 
you throw your immune system, your digestive system, your cortisol levels, mm -hmm. everything out of whack. So if you're not going to get at least probably a good hour and a half, you might as well just get up. Yeah, that's a good idea. It. Yeah. And then take a nap later if you're still tired. I mean, Bingo. no one, no one's going to die. No bad things are going to happen. Just take sleep later. Um, yeah. I love that. So a Go corollary ahead. on that. And, and I joked about this and saying anything but that, anything but that. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Anything but that. This came about with, I was reading a book by Robin Sharma many, many years ago. And I had just finished a book for uh, college students with learning disabilities and had done that as a, um, I would go into the coffee shop at sunset um, at this 24 hour coffee shop with the, the neatest pin cushion people on the planet. And, and, you know, they got the tattoos, they got everything going on. And I'd love it. It was so colorful. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And I'd stay there till about sunrise and then crawl home and sleep for many hours. After that, I was, I was reading so many books on self-development and I really got into Robin Sharma and the monk who sold his Ferrari, this whole series, um, really resonated with me. Although I still wanted the Ferrari. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you love cars. Yes. I'm a car nut, but, um, he had all these techniques and I was like, doing it, doing it, done it, been there, got it, good, it, good. Up first thing in the morning, what? Uh, no, 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 we're not going to do that one. We'll do everything else he asked, but I'm not going to get up early in the morning. Probably within about six months, I had tried it. I, I resisted, I resisted, but it'd been, I'd gone through probably Stephen Cuddy, as Covey had said it, um, uh, Nightingale Conan, all, I, all these, all these giants had said, get up early, get up early, get up early, get up early, get up early. I'm like, no, 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 no. And Robin Sharma, I'm like, that's it. Absolutely not. <gasps> and, and it was him. He caused it about six months later. I finally did it. And, you know, the first couple of weeks, I felt pretty dog tired. And it's like building into any routine. And there was there was some some jet lag, in a sense, involved because you're shifting your world by a couple hours. Once I got into it, my world was on fire. It was incredible. And that's when I started taking all these drop dead gorgeous sunrise photos. I, I got in galleries and stuff. And I, actually, it was a really cool process. I won't even go there, but, but just took these amazing photos of the sunrise. I never knew that there's so much beauty existed because I'd always slept later than mm. that. That is perfect. And especially with daylight savings time, does that make the mornings darker or lighter? I can't remember. You fall back. Makes the mornings lighter. I actually, I, I was thinking about talking about this with Jessica and I'm like, you know, in a strange way, I actually wish we could have the reverse of it yeah. <laughs> so that the sun stays asleep longer. So you have more of that silent time in the morning, but yeah. it gets so dark early that it's fine. It's, yeah. it's, you've got plenty of time before the sun actually comes up to get your meditation, get your automatic writing or journaling and, and just have your me time. Mm -hmm. Take that time for you. And it's even typically before your kids get up, before your spouse gets up, unless they're doing it as well, it really can be your religious me time. Mm. Okay, can I share with you one idea that I had this? Okay, so you know that freedom is one of the things that it's like one of my themes for this year. And so um, I had a book that um, I won't tell you the book. <laughs> but I read the book and I thought, I'm so not inspired. And I thought, well, I'm focusing on freedom. And so part of me, it's a, and it's a hard thing, you know, because you're, you're as a host, you're looking at your own personal freedom. You're looking at your audience. You're looking for satisfying three different constituents, yourself, your audience, and your author. You're always looking at those three and trying to... Um, optimize on all three ideally and so I read through this book and I thought I can't do it like I just am not there's no energy in the book it's a totally worthy book it's well written I just don't have energy in this book and I don't know what to do and so I thought well and I don't have any time because my whole Tuesday was falling apart and my Monday also subsequently like it was just nothing everything I was sick I was catching up and I'm like I really don't have time I'm going to have to cut walking with my husband, uh, walking in nature, like all the things I love doing in order to read this book, spending time with my son. I can't. So I said, I just, I, I don't know what to do. And I thought, I just don't want to read this book. And so I thought, well, that doesn't seem quite right. And I, I don't know. And so I thought, no, you, if your goal is freedom, 
then mm-hmm. you have to look and say, you are not being free because you feel imprisoned by having to, that those are operative words. I have to read this book. I need to read this book. And I thought, I don't have to. I've been doing this interviewing for so long. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to only spend one hour. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put a timer and I'm going to spend one hour on this so that like I, you know, I'm trying to, again, optimize for these three things. And um, I started the timer and my mom, who I hadn't talked to um, and who I've been trying to reach calls. And I thought, well, this is more important than reading this book. And of course, I don't really want to read the book to begin with. But so I end up talking to my mom for 40 minutes. So now I have 20 minutes before the interview actually happens. And I'm going through the book and I thought, okay, well, this is the ultimate in freedom and faith. Because I don't really, I haven't read the book. Mm-hmm. I haven't spent any time. I'm only spending 20 minutes. And this is the ultimate test to see if I can actually optimize, in this case, for my personal freedom, maybe at, and will I harm the audience and the guests? I don't know. But if I never try it, then I will never know. So I thought, okay. So I read through the outline and I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, here are the seven chapter titles. And then I just looked at each chapter and looked at the headings within each of the titles. And I was like, I think I know what this book's about. So then (laughs) I go into the interview and it was fine. Mm -hmm. I spent 20 minutes, just like the one that you said where you're like, whoops, I didn't realize I had a coaching, you know, like, and it was completely fine. And I thought, wow, that was just like a fascinating life lesson. Because I spent more time worrying about probably reading the book than I actually spent <laughs> reading the book. But I optimized for my personal goal and the best for everyone. And it, and it worked out. It's just the weirdest thing. When I get into a book and, and um, I hit a lot of resistance, um, I'll push through a certain section, a certain amount of the book. I can't say for any given book, but if I hit that resistance, I'm now fully aware that it's probably not going to be, and I'm sure I've mentioned this before, a book interview, mm-hmm. meaning we're going off in a different direction or it's going to be on a subset, one chapter, one concept in the book. And I realize that that is universe kicking me with a boot in the gut saying you don't need to read anymore. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Even though you're the book reading guy, Michael, don't define yourself. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And I realized that that twisting at my gut is telling me to step away from it. Mm. And, and I will step away, whatever that means. Typically it means I'll, I'll you know, go out for a walk or run a bike ride, a kayak, something to get as far away from the book as I can in that distance. I'll see how it probably all fits together or I'll just have faith. You've done so many interviews, Michael, you've done so many interviews, CJ, there's a reason for this. I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. And then the last point on that, which, which I've noticed this happens with reading, although less so now, but it, it happens with commitments. And I've really had to learn this one well. I say in t- insanity is having two masters. And one of those masters can be you. Trying to please yourself and trying to tear, please somebody else can tear you apart. And so you have to, at those times, go back to one master and one master only. And no matter what, it'll all fall in place. So if you know, I can either please myself or please somebody else. Well, ultimately, if you please yourself, you're going to be able to please others better. Mm-hmm. If you go to please the other person, your chances are you're going to be tearing yourself apart. But you could make an agreement. You could say, you know, this is totally not what I want to do, but I'm going to drop what I want to do and be okay pleasing the other person. And then in a sense, you're pleasing yourself too, because you're no longer in what we call what Buddhist term of suffering, because suffering's optional. At that point, you're going, I'm just going to let it go, let go of my attachment to what I wanted in this case, mm-hmm. and hop over to the other train. But you're not being ripped apart. Mm-hmm. It's funny, because I would say that my amendment to that I, is, I'm like, okay, if I'm surrendering, what am I surrendering to? I'm surrendering my will to, I'm just going to say God's will. I, I sure. use whatever universal will, whatever word you want to use, but it's like, I, I, my goal right now this year is to surrender to God's will. And so I, so I went through this whole, I'm like, this is my goal to surrender to God's will. So why did this person, this PR person contact me? Why did this interview happen at this juncture? There is some God's will that is happening. And why is it that I can't read the book? It must be 
that this is God's will. So if I, if, is it me? Like wh what's happening? If, if this is the energy and everything is flowing in this way, then there must be something happening beyond what I can understand. And so if I just surrender into God's will, I'm not going to read the book. I'm not going to pre prepare a set of questions. I'm just, I did prepare a set of questions like 10 minutes before, but it was, you know, it was like, and we covered some of it. We covered mostly not none of it because even though I did the prep, the guy was a dialogue or so he just went on and talked about all sorts of That's other things. exactly what I'm talking about. Universe told you in advance by saying, don't read the book, don't read the book. You're not going to feel comfortable reading the book. You're not going to read the, read the book. I'm going to give you this, this to take care of, that to take care of, the other thing to take care of, because no matter what you do in prep time, he's going to dialogue. Right. And <laughs> that's exactly what happened. I'm like, okay, so, but it worked that's out. having faith. It is having faith. It's so, I, so the one thing is I'm going to follow the flow of the universe. And I don't mm -hmm. know why. I don't feel inspired. I can't read the book. I haven't done much prep, but I just have to trust that this is God's will, not my will. It's God's will. And if I my goal this year is to surrender into God's will, then that's what I must do. Woohoo! Woo the addendum to your addendum <laughs> would be the more time that we take getting centered the more time we step out of the busyness and just be present with ourselves, the easier it is to see the guidance and flags from the universe so that we don't get stuck in the drama before we let go. We'll let go right. eventually, but we don't have the tug of war because we can catch it sooner. We're human. We're probably not going to catch it like, oh, that's God speaking to me this second. Unless you get the burning bush, and right. in which case you might need a fire extinguisher. Right. <laughs> but, but, you, but the more that you get centered in your day, the more that you get present in things that you do, the easier it is to go, wow, I don't really want to read that. Why? What's really going on here? Do I need to read this? No, no, I don't think I do. Let me prepare a handful of questions. And that way I'm, I've got a backup, but then let me take that call. Let me do this. Let me do that. There's some reason I'm getting that boot kick in the belly to right to my gut. That's telling me, stop it. Right. <laughs> Don't read this. Yeah. It's the best. It's one of the best lessons in faith, right? Cause I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't really know. And, and conviction, right? It's the conviction to say, are you going to live in integrity with this single, you know, single-minded purpose is what you describe. Is it single-minded focus? You know, single-minded purpose. Single SMP. Mi okay. Single-minded purpose. So my SMP is for freedom, fun, and meaning. If this is really what it is that, and it's not happening, then you have to honor that one, you're, this is what you feel. And if you're also feeling the energy and the flow of the universe is not supporting you, it's like, and the universe is saying, yeah, you're right. You know, and you're tuning in and making the time and energy to do that. Then it's like, okay, now it's the ultimate expression of faith. Because even though my ego is like, no, don't do that. No, you can't do that. You're not that person. You're, you got to be the person who reads that book. It's like, no, I just have to faith that everything is going to work out. And that was the best thing to have happen to me and I and I was willing to walk into that interview going like this could be an utter fail and that's okay <laughs> I have no idea I could be totally and wrong and it didn't the odds after all of your hours of doing interviews is pretty close to zero that's going to happen unless it was meant to happen if it's supposed to be a total crash and burn there ain't a darn thing you can do right, to save that's true. It. but other than that it will work out and that's the missing component but I think we all walk around in a day-to-day -day basis. It's, uh, it's what Amy Cuddy, Cuddy called the uh, imposter syndrome. Mm. We all think, how the heck did I get here? Are people going to figure out that, that I'm not supposed to be here? It's, it's not about ego, um, but it is about um, believing in yourself, trusting in yourself, having faith in yourself. And, and so ultimately, I've done a whole bunch of interviews, you could be saying. I know this is going to work out no matter what. Somebody else saying... I've survived or done, thrived in this job, in this company, in this situation or something for two, five, 10, 20 years. It's all going to work out. But we instead have this fear that the whole deck of cards is going to come crashing down on us. Right. And because we have the fear of the deck of cards coming crashing down on us, we go to the amygdala response. We get into a place of fight or flight. 
And if we're not careful, we're going to cause the whole deck of cards to come crashing down on us. It's right. like the sleep thing, yeah. the, the fear of the fear. If we instead let go of the fear of the fear of not sleeping, let go of the fear of the fear of what's going to happen if I'm quote unquote ill prepared. You've had seven years of preparation behind the mic. Right. You're not yeah. ill prepared. If we let go of that, we step into anything with a confidence and unshakability that'll carry us through. Everybody listening to the show is still alive. That means you've survived. Well, as far as I know, I don't know about the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> you've survived up to this point. You have a hundred percent track record. Right. You know, it's funny because it goes back to the Victor Frankl thing, right? It's the fear. The fear of the fear is so paralyzing that we do, we choose to do nothing. We could choose to, I could have leaned into the fear and said, okay, well, I'm really fearful. So I better do all this preparation just in case. Right. But I just thought, no, what is the worst possible thing to be? What is my greatest fear to be ill prepared, you know, not make the audience happy, embarrass myself. I'm like, okay, I'm just willing to go there. And this may happen and, and have the courage to be like, yep, this may happen and go into the fear and see, or I'm going to sweat and, you know, a, you know, half a gallon today. That's, and I'm going to say, I may, I, you know, I didn't say to my guests, I'm totally ill prepared. <laughs> you know, I, just, but Why? I, I haven't read your book. <laughs> I haven't read your book and you know, I'm totally ill prepared. You know, you don't have to go that far, but I was like, I walked in going like, yeah, I am not really prepared and I'm sweating, you know, I'm sweating a court, you know, whatever it is, like you go into the fear and then see what happens. And the worst case happened did not happen. And so maybe next time it won't happen. So it's just like having, it gives, those are the things that give you faith, right? Those are the things I write about in our next book, The Open Hearted Warrior. Yay. It's dropping the shields, stepping forward without resistance in a place of surrender saying, the best is going to happen. I bring my energy forward. I bring my heart forward. It's going to all work out no matter what. And when you come from that place, that's a place of strength and confidence in your heart. Mm -hmm. Coming from a place of love, from there, you're resonating at such a beautiful frequency. It works out. We don't know what the workout is, but it works out if instead we go to the old school way, shields up, I'm not prepared, I've got to take charge, let's see what we can do with this thing. You completely throw a wrench in the whole system. Universe had a plan for you. And it right. all comes crashing down, and then you go, well, next time I'm going to have to buckle up and try even harder. Right. <laughs> That's true. And you muck it up twice as bad. <laughs> Versus I'm one with the universe. I'm one with this person. We are all one. The right thing is going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm using a formula that I'm unfamiliar with, but I'm going to fa have faith that the feelings that I had, the energy that I'm feeling is right, and what I feel in my heart is right, and I'm just going to go with it. Step forward, step forward, step forward. Shields down, allowing from a place of love, which is a place of incredible, incredible strength. There's nothing stronger than it. And just be with the experience, period. You'll be fine. woo, -hoo -hoo -hoo! woo -hoo! <laughs> <laughs> Any final words? I'm just getting all... I, I need to like pop out of my chair and you now <laughs> make all this stuff happen. <laughs> <laughs> Go Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Be with yourself. If you're listening to this, you're awesome. You rock. You're greater than you could ever, ever, ever imagine. And you have a 100% success rate at survival, if nothing else. So just step forward. Shields down in integ integrity, coming from a pl place of strength and knowing that beauty can come out of this experience no matter what. Love it. Woohoo! Woo <laughs> <laughs> and then get up just a smidge earlier, a smidge <laughs> earlier before that, and a smidge earlier before that, and rock your morning. I'm just going to rip the Band-Aid off and wake up at 4.30. If I'm up 4.30 tomorrow, I'll be like, all right, Michael, I'm getting up. <laughs> the only challenge with that, CJ, and I'm not trying to give you an addendum. I know, kind, the gentle, two, easy, three good. or four days later. <laughs> when you, because if you, if you just jam it into gear like that, it works temporarily, but then you strip the teeth off of the gears oh. because mo motivation and willpower are limited resources. I believe in an unlimited world, 
but at a certain point we get tired. And so if you can sneak your way in the back door and make it easier, then you don't have to power through it. It becomes a part of your routine rather than something that just feels off. I see. Doesn't so you're you just. Can't... So what does that mean? You like I just wake. Say like whenever I wake up, I wake up. You can get to bed a little bit earlier and a little bit earlier whenever I wake up. Oh, I see. I wake got it. Up. Okay. Or have a backup alarm. Whenever I wake up, I wake up. But if I'm not up by five, then the alarm goes off. Whenever I wake up, I wake up. But if I don't wake up, I get a 4:45 alarm. Okay. Never 4.30. And so it is gradually. And now if you wake up at 4.30 and your alarm is set for 5, woohoo, I'm up. Okay, got it. start things early. Okay, got it. So you're saying back into it. So Absolutely. start off at like, if I'm waking up at 7, start off at like 6.30 or, and then keep on backing it down, 6 o'clock, yeah. 5.45. Very gradually. Sneak your way into it. All your body, and the reason we get jet lag first off is the connection with the earth, but your body is a pharmaceutical producing machine. If you suddenly jam it two hours back, for instance, your cortisol levels are going to be out of whack. All of your hormones are going to be out of whack because you're completely out of sync with the pharmaceutical factory inside of yourself. Ah, uh, so okay. You feel really, really icky. If you do it by the tiny little steps, sort of like we've all taken a medication where they said, don't stop right away. You got to do gradually wean off. Don't shock the system. Okay. It makes it much easier for everything to come into alignment. And then you're a week or two later, you're at that four o'clock time, but it's sustainable at that point. Got it. Yeah. So back it down. Seven o'clock, 6.30, 6.15, 6 o'clock. You could do seven, 6.45. I'm okay with those. Tiny little baby steps. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Thank you. Very good tactical ideas. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou saying, be well, have fun, step forward, open hearted, and very, very gently <laughs> work into that good morning and shine bright. <laughs> Woo! It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.